All right, y'all, today we are talking about Much Ado About Nothing. It's the Shakespearean comedy. So this is the video that you need to watch to make sure that you are ready to start reading it. I'm going to give you all the background information get you ready to start reading. So first up, it's set in Messina, Italy. So Messina is this beautiful city-state, and we've got some visitors coming in that have just fought a war. It's set around the 1500s, uh, but the that time's not super important but the entire play is gonna take place inside the city of Messina. So the easiest way to think about the characters is to sort them into three groups. We're gonna base that based on their relationships at the start of the play. First of all, we got the locals. The locals live in Messina, and we, we're gonna start with Leonardo. He's the governor of Messina. So Leonardo is a grandpa. He means well, but he's sort of a classic bumbling old man who's trying to help, but doesn't really do too much good. Next up, we've got his daughter, Hero. Hero is beautiful. She's sweet. She's kind. She's the classic girl next door. She is shy, though, and that's very important. She's very shy. Then we have Beatrice. That's Hero's cousin, Hero's best friend. She's the opposite to Hero. She is feisty. She doesn't take crap from anyone, and she is hilarious. She... Um, is just out to get you, and she will clown on you um, for the slightest thing. She does refuse to marry, and she has this history with another character, Benedict, uh, who they like to get in these verbal spars, this war of wits is what they call it. So those are the locals, and then we've got the soldiers. They're returning victorious from a war. So first up is Don Pedro. He's the, also referred to as the prince uh, he's in charge of Italy, uh, so he's the most important political figure, and he's an old friend of Leonardo. Don Pedro is actually the crazy uncle, y'all. So when he shows up, you know he's going to have a good time. He's going he's gonna to do something goofy, do something funny, and make sure that uh, everybody's enjoying themselves. So then we have Benedict. Benedict is a classic class clown. So he is always trying to roast you. If you, you will catch strays if you come up, ne come up next to Benedict. But he refuses to marry, and he's in this war of wits with Beatrice. So they're the two funny characters, and they're always trying to out-clown each other. And then we have Claudio. So Claudio, is he's the hero of the war. I think about Claudio like a freshman in high school who just made the varsity football team. And so everybody loves him and he's super popular, but he's super nervous and insecure. And he's like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to hang out with all these cool seniors. So Claudio is still trying to figure himself out. Then we've got the villains. Okay, so the villains are led by Don John. Don John's also going to be called the Bastard. He's the illegitimate brother to Don Pedro. So Don John is a misery loves company. If he can't be happy then neither can you. So he makes it his point to make sure everybody else is unhappy. Then we've got Conrad. Conrad's an I got you guy. Whatever Don, Don John needs, Conrad says, I got you. I got you. He's just a supporter, but he's a darn good one. He's loyal. And then Baracchio. Baracchio is a rowdy friend of Don John's. He's, he's got some looser mor morals than the rest of the crew. Um, and his name actually means drunk in, it, in Italian. So that gives you a hint about how he's going to act throughout the play. He's, he's a drunk, drunk fool. So let's talk about expectations. Much Ado About Nothing is a Shakespearean comedy. That means there are certain things that we can expect to happen. So one, we, we ought to look for some cases of mistaken identity. A character thinks that somebody is person A, but they're really person B. And that's going to lead to confusion. We want to look for, the, for this separation and then reconciliation. So characters who are start out together or start out happy are removed from each other, and then they come back together at the end. We're going to look at the heart versus the head. Characters are going to want to do one thing, but they're going to know that something else is best, and they're going to have to deal with that struggle. And finally, we're going to have a happy ending. Typically, comedies end in marriages. So everything's going to work out all right. But I know you're wondering, if everything's going to work out all right, and we know the ending, why are we reading the play in the first place? Well, first of all, we don't read it for the ending. We read it to find out how we get there. So she, and we read it to be entertained. Shakespeare is a master of verbal humor. 
So if a word has multiple meanings, you can bet that he's going to make a pun on it or he's going to make some sort of double entendre, make some sort of, you think I mean this, but really I mean that joke. Um, oftentimes crude as well. So he loves to use double entendres that have a sexual connotation. Then we're going to look at his humorous characters. He, in a different play, he literally has a character called Bottom who turns into a donkey. The ass becomes an ass. So Shakespeare is, is not afraid to put characters in there just for the sake of comedy. And finally, because it's a comedy, he doesn't worry too much about being realistic. So we have super surprising twists and turns. It's almost in a way a predecessor to the modern soap opera where a, things can flip like 180 degrees on the drop of a dime. So we don't read this play for the ending, but we read it for the journey, see how we get there. And I promise you we're gonna laugh along the way. So that's everything you need to know about Much Ado About Nothing. You can check out the Act One, Scene One summary next.